Welcome to another Red Tag fly tying video. This time around we're tying a, a little purple beaded uh, fox squirrel nymph or it could be hare's ear, whatever spiky material you like. Uh, the first thing to do is to fix the bead into place. So I tend to do this I tend to secure the thread and then hold the bead with my fingers and then just wrap around the head of the or the, the bead. Um, until it's fixed in place. This prevents it from moving around during the rest of the, 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 the tie. So once you've got that in place then the thread wraps again using the excess thread to guide your thread wraps and keep them nice and tight back down and around the bend of the hook a little bit. Once you've completed that then go forward back to you know a few mil behind the the bead itself get rid of your excess thread now i tie in a small fine copper wire and this is mainly just to secure the um, fox squirrel once you've you've got that um, tied into the fly I don't really put it in there for it to be seen, it's more just to strengthen the, the, the fly itself up a bit. So just tie that in and tie it back towards the rear of the fly and around the bend of the hook slightly. And then once you've, you're happy with its position, bring your thread forward to the centre of the fly. Now for the fox squirrel. So I, just, I like a really spiky sort of dubbing for this and I've found fox squirrels pretty good. It's lots of little spiky bits of hair in it. And I use my CDC clip um, to grab a very small amount of the fox squirrel from the packet and doing it from the packet you get a, a nice sort of length of it all distributed across the, the clip itself once you've got it positioned to how you like it I then split the thread using my needle and flattening the thread out across the top of my finger Split it roughly in two. And then grab my clip with my fox squirrel in it. Slide that in between the thread. And distribute it about 50-50. So have the thread going across roughly half of the fur. And then spin it up to secure it in place. This gives you a nice little sort of dubbing loop and I tend to set it back from the hook a bit so that I can wind back before I start getting fur on there and then once I've got a bit of fur on the tail evenly distribute the fox squirrel dubbing across the entire length of the hook. And I try to use as little fur as possible when I do this. Um, I find that flies sink better and I kind of like a sparse spiky finish. Then use your wire and wrap that around the dubbing to secure it in place. And I just sort of wiggle it in as I'm rotating the vise to try not to catch too much of the, the spiky pieces of the fur. Then secure the wire in place with a couple of wraps in front and a couple of wraps behind. and then just break it off with a few twists. Now it's time for the whip finish because the fly is pretty much done. You can if you like uh, leave it at this point or you can add a little bit of extra dubbing around the, 
behind, just behind the bead of the fly. So it's up to you to, to decide how you want to finish it off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm just demonstrating doing this. Now for the whip finish. So whip finish a few times to secure it. There's once. Give it a, a gentle pull to secure that and then a second one around to finish off. Cut your thread and the fly is pretty much complete. I always like to finish off with a little bit of head cement or glue just to, to secure that, that thread. Pretty much only requires one drop to, to secure it all in place. Let that soak in and disappear into the thread and let it dry and we're done. And in this case it was a size 14 hook and a 3.5mm bead. I use 2.5mm beads and smaller hooks. Just depends on the water requirements. Um, but I find that those two sizes satisfy most of the water that I fish.